This is Sonic, and you're watching JD Frank 20. What is up, everybody? And I want to send special thanks to Ryan Bartley being nominated uh, for the Voice Voice Arts Awards, which is fantastic right here. And I want to send special shout outs also to uh, to Joey Pagoy, senior animator on Sonic Prime, for being honored with an individual achievement in animation award at the at this year's Children and Family Emmys for his work in Sonic Prime. And finally, I'd like to send special thanks to James Martin on his Golden Globe nomination for his role for, for the Sonic the movie series, the Donut Lord himself. The hell with the Game Awards. Let's talk about legit nominations for once. Seriously, at least here we have no bias and people who actually show actual merit for their hard work. You know, seriously, like, regardless of the number of people mocking and laughing at Sega of Japan still wanting the Sonic the Hedgehog franchise to surpass their greatest rival, Mario, it can't be ignored that ever since the rise of the Sonic Cinematic Universe, the Sonic franchise has made massive changes to itself in the game's media advertisements and merchandise. When Paramount debuted the first Sonic the Hedgehog movie trailer back in May of 2019, it received so much negative backlash, especially the ugly Sonic model, which it did get a cameo appearance in another movie later down the road in a Chippendale movie, but that's besides the point. They had to redesign everything, and, th and thanks to Tyson Hees and Takashi Izuka serving as their consultant and character supervisor, the Sonic Cinematic Universe became a huge, massive success, and... And so much that Mario Kishimoto and Sonic Team took a lot of inspiration from the Sonic the Hedgehog movie and applied them into Sonic Frontiers, as I'm showing you screenshots right here. You see, you add two and two together, what do you get? Exactly. Since the rise of the Sonic Cinematic Universe, Sega Japan and Sonic Team have been marketing huge changes with the Sonic franchise, especially as they changed and matured Amy's character, showing Sonic's uh, substi noticing Amy a lot, more and wanting to be with her more and more often, properly establish Amy as the principal female lead and the main heroine of the Sonic franchise and Sonic's right-hand girl. They also made changes to the main Sonic uh, game character voices and personalities in having them interpreted as young adults with Tails as the exception. Ever since those constructed changes in, uh, have been implemented, Sonic has been taking... Wins after wins after wins. I mean, look at the Game Awards. No one gave two shit about the Game Awards. The only thing people are going to be talking about is the fact that uh, a lot of the uh, people giving their speeches were told to wrap it up, hurry up, and get your speech out there so we can move on. Yeah, that's the only thing people remembered. Every the Game Awards were so boring, no one cared about them. Sega literally had to save that award show for that three-minute trailer they had, which got everyone excited. Other than that, the rest of the Game Awards were just a, a snooze fest. Again, I mean, you can say whatever the hell you want about the Game Awards here and there. They have no credibility whatsoever. But when we do win awards shows here and there for our works in Sonic Frontiers, at least they're legitimate award shows. And just having uh, everyone else, everyone I mentioned right now in the opening video, they, you know, they're being credited for all their hard work. Just being nominated is a huge honor right there for a legitimate award show. Not that crap you saw in Los Angeles. So again, everyone, uh, let me know what y'all think about this. And again, give much praise to everyone. They deserve it for all their hard work. And here's to uh, Sonic the Hedgehog moving into 2024. Peace out, everybody.